Gambia, Angola, China Holding, Gash, producers of the finest tomato paste in the Gambia, Jeja, tomato paste, available in 5 kilos, 1 kilo and in sachets. For wholesale and retail, visit our factory at Banjulanding. We are also producers of Jeja mineral water, cool, clear and fresh. Gash, Gambia, Angola, China Holding, with headquarters at Fatu Golden Plaza, Mile 7, Bertel Harding Highway. Gash Group also provides the best security company. Gash Security for your offices, warehouses, homes, and personal property. Gash Group for all your construction projects, offering you quality water reticulation for your gardens, pump irrigation, tidal irrigation projects, and all types of buildings. You can contact Gash on 396 7894 700 8993 373 Visit us at Gash Global Group on Battle Harden Highway, Fatu Golden Plaza. Our website www.gashglobal.com Gambia Angola China Holding Gash Sophie Milk you have a little bit of 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 a Dajale el fukak juro mi empty carton y jalika milk. Pour gagner yen en hewel yu melni PlayStation 4, TV, fridge freezer, gas cooker, bicycle, wala mobile phone. Dajale el fukak juro mi empty jalika milk shashes. Deflen si pir envelope, pinda si sa tour, aksa telefon number. Mungen ko yu busi webpo jalika milk agent bulen gena jage. Pour hambe si rafuli, demlen jalika milk Facebook page. Jalika milk, moy mewe es bulen sofi indel, gana nerg saf sap terish. It's a warm welcome to our studio here in Seracunda. This is Star TV News with Mumudu Bailabari. In the headlines tonight, calls for opposition alliance as December polls draws closer. BB Dabo says GFA is receptive to idea of alliance. Former KMC CEO says fraud allegation against her is outcome of betrayal. Four foreigners return to custody of a stealing item worth seven million. On the international scene, Peru's first poor president promises to end poverty. Deadly landslides flooding heat from here comes in Bangladesh. Ivory Coast leader Water Amit Rivals says crisis behind us. Those were the headlines and now the news in detail. A defender of President Adam Abaro's five-year mandate has called on opposition political parties to join forces for the December general election as fears grows in some quarters that President Adam Abaro and his NPP could be the beneficiaries of a divided opposition. Already, the NPP is exploring more political partnership opportunities and the APRC could soon be the latest party to unite forces with it for the upcoming poll. More in this report by... Already, the NPP is exploring more political partnership opportunities and the APRC could soon be the latest party to unite forces with it for the upcoming poll. Former President Yaya Jame has yet to speak to the base, but indications are that the party he leads may go into an alliance with the party of the man who unseated him nearly five years ago. The APRC and the NPP are reportedly advanced in their consultations to forge an alliance for the December general election. The former political force have been involved in several months of political horse trading. The rank and file of the APRC have expressed some uncertainties about a possible APRC NPP alliance as the Supreme Leader is yet to speak to the base. But the upper echelons of the party have been given hints that an APRC NPP alliance is not a distant possibility. Already, PPP, GPDP, NCP, and NRP are backing President Adam Abaro. However, more than 10 political parties and independent candidates have expressed desire to run for number one Marina Parade. With a crowded field of opposition parties, there are fears in some quarters that the incumbent and his NPP could be the only beneficiaries of this. 
the Secretary General of Baro for five years and peace building organization Ibrahim Soreba also says the fear that President Baro and the NPP could be the beneficiaries of a divided opposition. Mr. Ba is now the Secretary General of the Gambia Jama Party and according to him, the time is now to initiate the process of dialogue among the opposition with a view to presenting a united and formidable front against the NPP alliance. As soon as possible, the, the, the process has to start now. I want to be part of the process. All of them, you name them, the, the, the parties that are with the president will never be part of coalition. No, they will not, except otherwise. It is highly likely that they will not. But it will be a surprise for me to see them coming out of that coalition. Oh. You still have about 10 or 12 or 13 parties that can come together. To Ibrahim Masoreba, uniting the opposition under one banner could be a tall order, but it is well worth it. Well, it's, it's a task. It's a difficult task. There has to be a leader. There has to be the initiative has to come like I advocated for. I am going to continue to advocate it. I'm going to continue to, to resort. I'm going to be talking to the party leaders. We'll have to put our differences aside and try to go in for that which is of fundamental concern and interest of the Gambian people and the Gambia as a state. Meanwhile, hope for a united opposition is fading barely four months to the general election. Reporting for Star TV News, I am Dado Cham. Meanwhile, the Secretary General of the Gambia for All, Bakari Bunja Dabo, exclusively told Star TV that his party is receptive to an alliance for the December poll. The former vice president was, however, quick to add that GFA will only forge alliance with like-minded political parties and that the party is not currently involved in any alliance negotiations. Let's have a listen. We are not in any negotiation right now. What I should talk to you about is what is the attitude of Gambia for All as a party towards working with other forces. Coalition is only one of the possible formats for a political party or political forces to join together. We are open to work with other political forces, provided the principles and values that we stand for in Gambia for All converge, are consistent with the principles and values which other, those other political forces stand for. So as a, as a matter of principle, we are open. But when you ask me whether we are in, engaged in negotiation, the answer is no, we are not yet. The Belaguard CEO of KMC, Senabu Martin Sonko, has said the 12 million fraud allegation against her is the outcome of a grand scheme of betrayal. Ms. Martin Sonko believes that she is a victim of bring her down syndrome. More details in this. The chief executive officer of the Carnifin Municipal Council is currently grappling with reputational crisis, but the embattled CEO is confident that the damage done to her image will be redeemed at the appropriate time. Senabu Martin Sonko, alongside KMC Finance Director and others, were on Monday sent home after a reported discovery of a huge scale fraud and all the CD deals attributed to them. The mayor of KMC, Ahmed Talib Ben Souda, on Monday told the media that he felt utterly let down by Senabu Martin considering the trust and confidence he reposed in her. To Mayor Ben Suda, it was the height of betrayal and abuse of trust and confidence that Ms. Martin Sonko will connive with others to defraud the council of $12 million. The case has bewildered the nation and generated social media storm. However, Senabu Martin Sonko said on Wednesday that she will turn every stone to repair her battered image. She told Star FM Wake Up Gambia show that the entire fraud allegation against her beat the imagination adding that it was an elaborately designed scheme of betrayal. Ms. Martin revealed that she was in consultation with her lawyer on the petition and will shed light on the issue in a press briefing to convene at what she called the right time. She said the evidence will be revealing. Uh, I know what I've learned. I know what I've learned. Firstly, um, don't ask me what I've learned. Sometimes, I'm going to ask you more than a couple of people at your back. The Blicket CEO accused KMC of using the alleged $12 million scam to victimize staff, saying one of the victimized staff members was alleged to have been supplying the details of the alleged fraud to Freedom Online newspaper. KMC is yet to react to these allegations. Reporting for Star TV News, Maimuna Jufadera. Four foreign nationals were on Wednesday returned to state custody as their trial over charges of stealing precious stones and other valuable goes on. 
Binda Koli reports. The three Senegalese and one Malian have been tried at the Kanifi Magistrates Court for allegedly breaking into the Fajara office of a certain Kutuboja Haliture sometime in 2020. Witnesses continue to testify as prosecution tries to prove the ingredients of the matter beyond reasonable doubts. The diamond, gold, silver, cars and other valuables that the four men stand accused of stealing were valued at little over $7 million. On resumption of their trial on Wednesday, the lawyer of the four accused foreigners, Idrissa Mansajan Sisoho, continued from where he stopped at the last adjoined date. The cross-examination of the prosecution witness, Officer Sajo Sise. Lawyer Sisoho put to Officer Sise at today's hearing that the wife of the first accused never fled the jurisdiction but had traveled to Senegal to join her husband in Corita celebrations, following which the couple and their child traveled to Mbur to visit the husband's sick mother. According to the defense counsel, there was no iota of truth in Cesar's narration that the accused had fled the jurisdiction. But Cesar maintained his position, saying he was part of the team that brought the accused from Senegal upon his arrest there. Meanwhile, according to lawyer Cesarho, the second accused person, Emalian, also traveled to Kaulak for the 2020 quarter. But prosecution witness Sajo Cisse argued that the second accused is a Malian and not a Senegalese. Officer Cisse informed the court that the second accused had confessed to the police that he was taken to an unknown place in Senegal by the first accused and that he found life there unbearable. The defense lawyer, however, argued that if at all the accused persons have said the stolen money as alleged, the second accused would not languish in Senegal. Cisse insisted that his testimony was true because that was the first time the second accused, a Malian, traveled to Senegal. Prosecution witness Cisse stated that the first accused, a Senegalese, was the mastermind of the burglary. Meanwhile, lawyer Cisseho put it to the witness that there was no way the accused persons could cut away the amount of money in the five-day interval between the alleged theft and their arrest. The case resumes August 2nd. For Star TV News, I am Bintakoli. From that Bintakoli story, we will be taking our first commercial break. When we come back, we look at news outside the Gambia. Gambia, Angola, China holding Gash, producers of the finest tomato paste in the Gambia. Jaja tomato paste, available in 5 kilos, 1 kilo and in sachets. For wholesale and retail, visit our factory at Banjulanding. We are also producers of Jaja mineral water, cool, clear and fresh. Gash, Gambia, Angola, China holding, with headquarters at Fatu Golden Plaza, Mile 7, Bertel Harding Highway. Gash Group also provides the best security company Gash Security for your offices, warehouses, homes, and personal property. Gash Group for all your construction projects, offering you quality water reticulation for your gardens, pump irrigation, tidal irrigation projects, and all types of buildings. You can contact Gash on 3967894700809937302359. Visit us at Gash Global Group on Battle Harden Highway. Fatu Golden Plaza, our website www.gashglobal.com. Gambia, Angola, China Holding, Gash. Sophie Milk. You have a little bit of 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 a pour gagner motorbike dajalal fuk ak juroomi empty carton ni jali camel pour gagner yenen hewal yu melni playstation 4 tv fridge freezer gas cooker bicycle wala mobile phone dajalal fuk ak juroomi empty jali camel chaches def len ci bir envelope pinda ci sa tour ak sa telephone number mën ngeen ko yobu ci bep jali camel agent bu len gëna jégué pour xam bi sira fuli dem len jali camel facebook page Jelly Camilk, my man who is pulling Sophie Indel, gonna nerf some sapperish. And now news outside the Gambia. Peru is celebrating 200 years of independence with a change of power and a new president who, like millions of Peruvians, grew up in poverty. From being almost unknown, Pedro Castillo rose to the presidency 
of foreign change for millions of poor Peruvians. And while many hope he delivers on his promises, some are worried that he will. Al Jazeera's Mariana Sanchez reports from Lima, Peru. 200 years as a republic, on Wednesday Peru commemorates a landmark anniversary, the independence from the Spanish colonialists. Now for the first time, a farmer and rural primary school teacher takes over the presidency. Pedro Castillo comes from one of the poorest districts of Peru. Many Peruvians say they feel represented, but Jessica Laguna says her community, on the outskirts of the capital, Lima, has little to celebrate. The Republic is 200 years old, but there's inequality everywhere. We're rolling in the same mud and we can't escape. We wish our children could have it better, but we always have needs and there's no work. We wish for change, but we can't do better. They claim the state has forgotten the poor. Members of this community build the roads themselves. They raise animals and eat together in a communal kitchen. Many families here at the Alto Retamal community live on less than $8 a day. Millions like them have come from remote places. For decades, people have been migrating from the Andes to the capital looking for a better life and they ended up living in shanty towns where they continue to live in poverty. Margarita Alcagua says she doesn't have any hope that the new president will bring change. My grandparents, my parents, we've always been poor. I was brought here as a child to escape poverty and look, we the poor will always be poor. No one remembers us. President Pedro Castillo has promised that there will not be any more poor in a rich country, but analysts say the road for him will be uphill and tough. 200 años. In 200 years, we have learned to survive rather than to live. Our hardships are severe. We have gone from being one of the countries with the highest level of development to where we are now, at the end of the scale. From being almost unknown, Pedro Castillo rose to the presidency, offering change for millions of poor Peruvians. And while many hope he delivers on his promises, many are wary that he will. Mariana Sanchez Al Jazeera, Lima, Peru. Monsoon rains in Bangladesh have caused landslides at the world's largest refugee camp, killing at least six people, mostly children. Authorities have relocated thousands of Rohingya from the Kutapalong camp in Coxbatha, home to more than a million refugees from neighboring Myanmar. The government says it is taking measures to find new quarters for Rohingya and ensuring their camps are safe. Al Jazeera's Alexi Obren reports. In the pouring rain, people come to see what happened or salvage what's left. The makeshift homes built from plastic sheets and bamboo poles had no chance when this muddy hillside collapsed in torrential rains. My sister went to the bathroom and after she returned, the side of the hill came down. I have one niece and two nephews and my sister. My brother-in-law, along with the other family members, managed to get out of the shelter but the cliff came down on those four and the entire shelter was damaged. Two of them died and two others were injured. The powerful monsoon rains caused a flood that reached roof height in some areas of the Kutapalong camp. More than 100 tents are said to have been washed away by the water. Kutapalong in Bangladesh is the world's biggest refugee camp and the most densely populated. It's home to more than one million Rohingya, who fled a crackdown by the military in neighbouring Myanmar. It's overcrowded, basic and prone to landslides and flooding. We have informed the people at risk here to move away. If they do not comply with our request, we will take alternate steps. Since it's raining so much, we hope the Rohingya population at the camp will move away from risky dwellings. The government says all the Rohingya will be resettled as soon as possible and that measures are being taken to minimise casualties caused by the annual rains. But rights groups say it's not enough, and that the floods prove once more how vulnerable the Rohingya refugees are to the impacts of climate change. Many are now sheltering in mosques and schools, and facing the prospect of having lost their homes again. Alexia O'Brien, Al Jazeera. Ivory Coast President Alassane Ouattara and his predecessor Lauren Gbagbo say they won peace after the rivals met for the first time since a deadly 2010-2011 conflict. 
Gbagbo had refused to concede defeat to Ouattara in the 2010 elections. About 3,000 people died in violence following the disputed polls. Gbagbo recently returned to Ivory Coast after the International Criminal Court acquitted him of crimes against humanity. Al Jazeera's Ahmed Idris reports from Abuja, Nigeria. After a decade of bitter rivalry, their first meeting was an icebreaker. Both leaders smiled to the cameras. Then President Alassane Ouattara invited his predecessor into a palace he was forced to leave 10 years ago. At the end of the meeting that lasted an hour, the two leaders came out relaxed and with words of hope for a deeply divided nation. Now the meeting we've been eagerly waiting for has happened. We should all congratulate each other. There's been crises and divisions in our country, but that's all behind us. The most important thing is peace for our country. As Lawrence said, it is important for us to move forward. It's good for our future. On his part, Laurent Gbagbo asked that Ivorians jailed for their roles in the country's political crisis be set free. I'm very happy with our meeting because it was very relaxed and I'm very proud about it. And I requested that we should have such discussions from time to time to reduce the tension in the country. The power tussle between the two foes sparked two civil wars that cost thousands of lives and the country's political stability. Gbagbo, who still commands a large following despite his 10-year absence from Ivory Coast, is key to its future stability. So also other exiled politicians, like former Speaker of Parliament Guillaume Soro, once our terror ally. The meeting is seen as an important first step. I think they realize that it's time to figure out a future. We cannot face worse than what we saw in 2011. But some Ivorians are skeptical of a quick reconciliation. These victims and families of those killed during the country's wars gathered to lay a wreath hours before the meeting. If they want to reconcile, they can. But that should come at the expense of the victims of their political rivalry. If victims are not involved and are not happy, they might as well expel us from the country. Ten years of national reconciliation driven mainly by civil society has so far failed to heal wounds here. One meeting won't immediately change that. Ahmed Idris, Al Jazeera. And before we end the news, a quick recap of our main headlines. Calls for opposition alliance as December polls draws closer. BB Dabo says JFA is receptive to idea of alliance. Former KMC CEO says fraud allegation against her is outcome of betrayal. Four foreigners return to custody of a stealing item worth 7 million. On the international scene, Peru's first poor president promises to end poverty. Deadly landslides flooding heat from here comes in Bangladesh. Ivory Coast leader Water Amit's rivals says crisis behind all. That's all for this edition of the news. Thank you very much for watching. Do join us tomorrow for more news. Till then, do have a very good night.